Welcome to Caribbean Global Network News. I am Scott Wilson. In today's headlines, suspect in eight-year-old murder set ablaze. And in sports, Rousseau hailed for sporting contribution. Gunmen rob supermarket in Spalding shoots policeman. The police have launched a manhunt for a gunman who robbed a supermarket in Spalding and then turned around and opened fire indiscriminately in their bid to escape, hitting a policeman who was standing at the station gate. Information reaching CGN is that men dressed in army fatigues and armed with M16 rifles robbed an undetermined sum of money from the establishment. The men reportedly escaped in a white Toyota Pro Box, sending persons scattering in panic as they fired several shots before making their escape. The injured policeman was rushed to hospital and reportedly underwent surgery. PSOJ president wants the dollar pegged to the U.S. Currency Sector Organization of Jamaica, the PSOJ. President Howard Mitchell is calling for the abolition of the current foreign exchange management program and for the Jamaican dollar to be pegged to the U.S. currency. Speaking at the Jamaica International Exhibition, JIE, business breakfast at the S Hotel in Montego Bay Wednesday, Mitchell questioned the rationale of operating the foreign exchange management program in an open economy as Jamaica's. Mitchell, who is also a director of the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association, JMEA, said that a devaluation is a curse and a self-imposed albatross around the necks of the Jamaican people. Quote, it is time that we face the reality, end quote. Describing the foreign exchange management program as fiction, Mitchell argued that small open economies benefit from having their own currency only if they succeed in anchoring to a reserve currency at an exchange rate that never varies. The JIE is designed as a global expo, open to local and international companies across all industries, including tourism, construction, business process outsourcing, agriculture and manufacturing, and will be held at the Montego Bay Convention Center from May 30 to June 1. At its inaugural staging in 2017, the show attracted more than 600 overseas buyers and suppliers of goods and services. Vigilante justice as suspect in murder of eight-year-old beaten and set ablaze. A man who community members accuse of murdering the eight-year-old girl found in Blue Hole in Sterling Castle was beaten and burnt to death on Wednesday. Residents pounced on 26-year-old Miguel Williams in a rage, beating him and then piling tires and other debris on him and setting him ablaze. In an interview with the Jamaica Gleaner, Williams' young brother said he didn't believe residents were satisfied with their thirst for revenge. He said, based on what he heard, his brother deserved what he got, but he was fearful for his own life. He also expressed fear that they might hurt his mother too. Meanwhile, Member of Parliament for the area, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, expressed regret and urged the residents not to give in to jungle justice. Jamaican-born businessman abducted in Trinidad. Jamaican-born businessman Yuan Chin was abducted from his home in South Trinidad on Sunday by men pretending to be cops. According to police reports out of the Twin Island, they believe a six million US dollar ransom is being asked for Chin's release and they have detained his 36-year-old business partner. The police say the partner had reported the kidnapping to them on Tuesday evening and further reveal that Chin's partner said on Sunday evening that he received a call from him indicating that earlier during the day, armed men, two wearing ski masks and two with hats, each with the word police written on it, came to his home. The police reportedly said the partner told them that Chin later called and gave him further instructions, including to go to his home and secure a Porsche car for safekeeping. The partner claimed again on Tuesday to have heard from Chin with the instruction to sell the Porsche as well as his personal car, a Benz. And over to sports. Rousseau hailed for sporting contribution. The tributes are coming in for former president of the West Indies Cricket Board, Patrick Pat Rousseau, who died on Tuesday night after being ill for some time. Cricket West Indies president Ricky Skerritt expressed sadness at his passing as he described Rousseau as a strong man, always very focused and determined. He also said he was a sharp legal and business mind. Sports Minister Olivia Babsy Grange also expressed sadness at his passing sharing that he had served the country and region well during his time as head of WICB 
and that he will be sadly missed by all. Skerritt defends firing interim head coach. Ricky Skerritt, president of Cricket West Indies, is defending his position to replace interim Windies head coach Richard Pybus with former Barbadian cricketer Floyd Reefer. The newly elected President Skerritt is in Jamaica meeting with stakeholders of regional cricket to discuss reforms and the restructuring of the governance of cricket in a series of meetings over the next few days. Skerritt had been among those who criticized former CWI President Wycliffe Dave Cameron for what he considered an abuse of power in his appointment of Pybus. It was not surprising that following the election and his being voted in as President that he would enact the changes which he believes will be critical to the immediate functioning of the team, including its technical staff. Kemoy Campbell advocates for defibrillators in school. Kemoy Campbell is back home in the island following his near-death experience when he collapsed in New York while competing at the Milrose Games. The Olympian, who represented Jamaica in the 3,000 meter at the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio, collapsed off the track in New York and was put into a medical-induced coma for two days. Despite the battery of tests that the doctors ran on the athlete to discover why his heart stopped, nothing conclusive was found, but doctors put an implantable cardioverter defibrillator inside his chest and ordered him to take a few months off before he could ever think about running again. Campbell came home as part of his recovery effort to his parish of Manchester, and the athlete said it feels great to be back home. The Team Jamaica Bickle, which has been providing athletes meals, mentorship, and medical assistance for years have also initiated a program to outfit Jamaican high schools with defibrillators. Campbell has now become an ambassador for that program. That's it for CGN News and Sports. I am Scott Wilson. Pleasant viewing.